So the video from 10 days ago, I was talking about the mindset change from employee to building your own business, whatever you want to call it, an entrepreneur, a business owner, uh, a dreamer, right? <laughs> and this last week, my wife and I have implemented a process in which I'm sitting down and working two hours a day to just build something, just get something off the ground. And so that first project that I decided to make is a stock analysis tool because I'm obsessed. I love crunching numbers, okay? <laughs> Things like an, an income sheet, balance sheet, and a cash flow statement are just fun. <laughs> it's fun to look at and, and uh, contemplate what could happen in the future with, with uh, different stock financial data. Uh, so given that that's a, you could say a large hobby of mine right now, uh, why not build some software around it? Because it, uh, it advances my skills and that makes me more employable. If any kind of business I make totally flops, awesome. It opens up a uh, domain knowledge market that I don't have experience in yet. I've never worked at a bank or for any kind of financial institute, so that could be interesting. Show off a demo of, of what my software can do and they're like, oh my God, we've never seen anything like this. You must come work for us immediately. That's how it works every time, right? Uh, so it's kind of win-win there with a, a two-pronged approach of do-it-yourself plus pad your resume. That's really nice. Um, I'm having fun while doing it. I'm thinking about it in my free time, how to do something different or better. That's a big plus. It's been about a week, so I mean, there's not a lot built. But, um, but it's fun and it's inspiring because even if this isn't a product that I later am able to market to people, what I'm learning while doing it is something that I can then copy paste over to the next project, whether it's some kind of scheduling tool or a budgeting app for families or we'll see. I have no idea. Could, uh, could go any direction with it. I mean, worst case scenario, it just gives me something that I can upload into AWS and practice my uh, infrastructure skills. So win, win right there. Um, I'll keep you updated on how that's going. Right now I'm trying to figure out how to get um, that financial data that I mentioned, but for more than three years. So the AI API that I'm using right now, um, it only gives three years of financial data, and that's okay. I'd prefer 10 or infinite. I could get price history on an infinite timeline, and there are websites I could scrape that uh, would give me those timelines of data. Sure, sure. Then I got to bust out some beautiful soup and uh, relearn web scraping, you know, to whatever extent. It's still up there. It's just, it's been two years since I've used it. I mean, it's been a little while. So it's not impossible. But if I build an entire program based on scraping a specific website, what happens when that website goes down? It's kind of a problem. It's easier to use an API of some kind. So there are options. Yeah, you know, maybe sec.gov has um, has 10Ks that I can figure out how to download, access uh, via an API or otherwise scrape. Who knows? A problem for another time. And uh, it's stuff like that that I find really interesting. Um, my wife and I have been really big. It's just been on our minds to spend the rest of the year sober. And... Not for any particular reason, Not like, there hasn't been an issue, but we've noticed, say it's the evening, we're going to have a glass of wine because it's, it's been a long day or it's the weekend or, you know, it's just a glass of wine would be appropriate. And we go from 100% momentum, feeling chipper, everything's great, to slowing way down, way down. And... It's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon because before, you know, alcohol would calm the nerves and make you feel a little more lively. If you feel a little run down or stressed or, or if you're tired, it'd perk you up. If you're not able to sleep, it'd put you to sleep. I mean, there's, there's a lot of benefits of alcohol, but lately it's been more of like, have a drink, feel horrible. Not hungover, not... 
you know, it's not causing arguments with us or anything like that. But you just go from from feeling like Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, like I I got this. I'm ready to work on a thing. I'm doing awesome. I'm gonna get 50 things done. Have a glass of wine. I don't feel like doing any of it. <laughs> And it just it saps that motivation. It saps that that good momentum energy that we're feeling. And we've both experienced something similar. And I don't know, it seems it seems more like it's robbing from us rather than adding to our lives. So we've been throwing around that idea. It's always our nature, you know, do the extreme thing. If we're gonna fast, let's fast for five days. Let's uh we're gonna do this diet. No more carbs! We're <laughs> Alcohol made us sleepy or slowed us down. Gonna have to kick it all together. And frankly, I'm seeing a lot of benefit to doing so and a lot of excuses to not do it. Where, it, like, oh, it's, it's 7 p.m. on a Friday night and it's, it's been a heck of a week. Those times feel really good to have a glass of wine or a beer or a mixed drink. Whatever the thing is of your choice, fill in the blank, okay? But it's not that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a false god. It's a, it's a liar. <laughs> it's a friend that comes over and <laughs> destroys your couch. <laughs> That's a story for another time. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the friend can be good company from time to time. But at the end of the day, it, it slows you down, makes your sleep worse. If you drink too much of it, your next day is going to be real bad. Even if you, you don't even drink enough to have a hangover, you just drink enough to be slow the next day too. Because yeah, you're, you're tired or, or hungover. And I'm just not finding a lot of reason to keep it around. To keep it in my life when I'm trying to go at Sonic the Hedgehog speeds and I think I'll sit around and watch a movie instead glass number two here we go you know no so that'll be interesting to see how it plays out I could see it going well what else is happening what else we got uh, I was in the middle of a virtual meeting today I had the windows open because it's nice to air out the house and middle of the meeting, some wind starts shaking one of the blinds, right? But it doesn't sound like wind. It sounds like blinds being pushed apart. And then I hear um, something being set down, like a foot of someone stepping through the window. Okay, now I consider myself to be a rational person. Fair, uh, you know, from time to time. But uh, last week the gate in the backyard came open and it was a very strange phenomena because this gate has one of those l bracket locks you know that you lift up and slide the gate out and when you put it down it goes into a pipe and locks the gate in place and this was scraped across the ground so i was scratching my head like what uh, what did this was it a stray dog did the neighbor throw a football over the fence they don't know that we're here and so they just went in the backyard because we're renting, right? We're new to the neighborhood. Maybe they don't know if someone moved in, so they came to get their football. Uh, I mean, that's possible. Um, the neighborhood's pretty safe. I don't think anyone's trying to break in. But, uh, yeah, it was a little disconcerting. So, I'm thinking of that. I'm hearing someone break into the window <laughs> that's open over here, you know, coming into an open window. I, I kill my camera in the virtual meeting. I go check it out. It's it's just the wind, like we mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, that kind of paranoia, I never had that in apartments, ever. Because apartments usually one entrance, and there's technically three in this house, minus all the windows. So. Um, and so it's it's a little different, renting a house versus renting an apartment. At least in an apartment, you have noisy neighbors. Here you don't, thank God. But uh, but you know where a threat's coming from, from the front door. In a house, it's like middle of the day. That's the best time to break into a house when you know everyone's gone. Why would I be paranoid about that? Because the gate was open, right? 
What a what a weird emotion. Not necessarily paranoia, but just feeling like um, feeling like your home is getting broken into, even when it's not. Even like I I totally get it. I was being ridiculous. It was the wind way out there, but. It's just a weird emotion. You kind of look around the room. You're like, where's my baseball bat? I <laughs> um, what else? So I'm very inspired by my wife right now. She has been putting out YouTube videos and doing it regularly, very regularly. And I need to buckle down and, and start doing this on a daily basis. Daily. Because it was 10 days ago I put up that video about uh, entrepreneurialism and thinking about employment wrong. And that's fine for all the things I got going on. But I want this, this thread over here, to be something that I do regularly. And then I can structure these videos a little bit differently, right? I don't have to talk about these three different things in one video. I could talk about just the application or just a funny break-in story or funny. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the goal this week. Put out more videos regularly. How many is that? Because it's not exactly a smart goal, right? You want it to be measurable, achievable, uh, you know, whatever the S, R, and T are. And um, so let's shoot for three videos this week. It's Monday. Video one. Let's shoot for three. Let's get them out. And I'll keep you updated. Tell you how that whole... Uh, stock analysis app goes tell you about the next project tell you how learning is going how the fitness journey are we gonna get sober will we ever get sober find out next episode you ever watch dream Ball Z? okay talk to you later <laughs> ah.